Hey, everyone. Before we get into this week's episode, I do want to just uh, ask that if you could, um, if, you're, I'm, if you're not already following along to the podcast, please follow along. But if you could leave a, a rating and a review, we would love to hear from you. Um, you know, your thoughts on the podcast. Hopefully it's positive. That would be super beneficial to both of us. And I think I could speak for Hartley and uh, I when I say that we would greatly appreciate that. It would be a huge help. Welcome back to another episode of the Mac Rumor Show. My name is Dan. We have Hartley here as usual. Hartley, good afternoon. How you doing, man? How's life? I'm good. I'm happy. No this iPads. Week. I'm happier this Why week. Why happy? Well, we had no iPads. We got. We, we were s- wrong. We may not have had any iPads, but I feel like we have had a little bit of news. So I'm oh, quite yeah, pleased. Yeah, yeah. Um, it gives we'll us something about. to look forward to. Uh, cast the eye forward to later in the year. So a little bit more momentum yeah. this week, I think, in the Apple community. I did. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely a good week because we had news of some sort, something to keep our eyes on. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, WWDC was officially announced. Uh, so we now have the dates, which is a little bit later than usual. Um, it's not the first week of June. It's now the second week of June. So it's going to be June 10th through the 14th. Um, obviously, the big keynote kicks off on Monday the 10th. And so we know that this is happening every year, but it's nice to get like dates on the books and it's like okay this is when it's coming and we'll get ios 18 which will be a big topic of our conversation um for today but just wwdc in general um obviously it's not going to be as groundbreaking right hartley because we're not getting apple vision pro we got that last year right we got yeah the we had a pretty hardware heavy wwdc last year because we also had the 15 inch yeah. macbook air we had mac pro mac, mac studio studio and of yeah. course, Vision Pro as well. I don't think we're going to get all that yeah. this year. Lots of AI. To, you know, I thought Apple wasn't allowed to say AI. Not that they're not allowed, but they don't like to say AI. Well, for many years, yeah. Apple prioritized uh, the phrase the phrase machine learning. That's what yeah. they like to say. But it was really noticeable how in the press materials for the M3 yeah. MacBook Air, it did not refer to machine learning. It referred to artificial intelligence. And that was very uncharacteristic. But sometimes Apple kind of chooses a wording for one of these things and then moves away from it. So even with things like it used to like uh, to refer to the MacBook as a notebook for many years. And yet, I think it was about a year and a half ago, it finally dropped that and started calling it a laptop like everyone else does. Um, because it's just it's clearly more useful and they wanted investors and people that have been critical of uh, the company for uh, its progress or lack thereof in terms of artificial intelligence to see that uh, they're leaning in that direction so even though the macbook air uh, the m3 macbook air is not or at least as an m3 machine is not better per se than any other device with the m3 chip at artificial intelligence you'd be forgiven for for thinking that was the case just based on the marketing materials um so yeah they've they've sort of changed the way that they they talk about it so uh the tweet from jaws that you know with the wwdc animation it's like the so a couple things i first noticed (laughs) i didn't even read his tweet i just looked at the animation the wwdc and the colors and i'm like oh those are clearly like the colors of siri when it illuminates and like obviously siri is going to get a big thing and um totally missed the it's going to be absolutely incredible which you might be thinking dan why is that uh why is that significant well in a sentence where you only capitalize the first word in a traditional sentence and then you end with absolutely incredible and the a and the i are capitalized that wasn't a mistake that was on purpose ai So obviously, but then did you see all the people like in the comments that are like this 14, the 14th letter of this is like all this dumb stuff to lead it to. Also, the W, W is all connected. And I guess you can do like, I guess there's a stretch, but it's like the first V is an upside down A, then it's like I, and then it's another V. And it's like, this is way too much for me. I can't handle that. But obviously it's not really a secret. Apple is going to be doing AI stuff. They've already said that this is a big year for it iOS 18 makes sense. That's the heavy rumors. Um, And so there are hints of that in the the marketing materials just for WWDC alone. So what did you think about all of that when you saw it? Did you get hyped up? 
I'm always pleased to see the event invites, but there was nothing surprising about this one. Even in terms of the yeah. artwork for it, I feel like there's less to unpick than in, in normal years. Um, well, just know it's not traditionally the like event invite. It's not like a media but it's still invite. The design, it's still the this design like, language of sure. it. Sure, this uh, was more of the announcement post. And though. to me, it, it's colored like the way that Apple has styled the uh, M-series chips for the Mac with those kind of rainbow hues going around the edge of a frame. That's what the lettering mm -hmm. is is designed like. So it made me wonder if maybe they're going to lean into on-device processing with artificial intelligence as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Apple's being pretty open about the fact that they are working on AI. Uh, Tim Cook has said plenty of times in investor calls, yeah. this is the year of AI for Apple, and this is the only mm -hmm. software-related event. So it, it's it's basically a certainty. Whereas in previous years, they, they haven't typically had something that they're willing to explicitly say ahead of time, yes, this is what's coming. Hey guys, just want to let you know that this episode of the Mac Rumor Show is sponsored by Notion. I've been using Notion personally for a long time, and it's been a driving force for a lot of what I do here at Mac Rumors, and specifically for the podcast and for the YouTube channel. We recently started using Notion again as a team, and the experience is so much better than before now that I have most of my team organizing and inputting all of our important information in a one-stop shop like Notion. I'll have my show notes, podcast episode backlogs, scripts for my videos, all my tasks. It's all here for me to see quickly and easily. Because because Notion combines your notes, docs, and projects into one space that's simple and beautifully designed. And you can now leverage the power of AI right inside of Notion across all of your notes and docs without jumping between your work and a separate AI-powered tool. And the fully integrated Notion AI helps you work faster, write better, and think bigger, doing tasks that normally take you hours in just seconds. I like to write my scripts in Notion, and then I use Notion AI to clean up my spelling and grammar mistakes, and then I'll have Notion actually break down my script into something more digestible and bite-sized for social media videos. This AI tool honestly saves me so much time doing this. Notion is used by over half of Fortune 500 companies, and teams that use Notion send less emails, cancel more meetings, save time searching for their work, and reduce spending on tools, which keeps everyone on the same page. So try Notion for free when you go to notion.com slash macrumors. That's all lowercase letters, notion.com slash macrumors, to try the powerful, easy-to-use Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. That's notion.com slash macrumors. Thanks, Notion, for sponsoring this episode. I just, I, I feel like, aside from, like, I tried to read into the animation and to the artwork of just the WWDC, and I completely missed the tweet, and that's really the biggest the biggest thing about it is that. Um, but uh, there are other things that we got news-related for iOS 18 this week, um, and that is, and man, have I seen so many people comment on, like, the short that I made um, or any videos that I made, like, man, groundbreaking feature, Apple allowing more customizing uh, customization on the home screen. Like, Android has had this for forever. We we understand that. But it is a big deal that, like, the home screen is going to have some more flexibility because there were, uh, just a couple of years ago, maybe even on this podcast, in the infancy of the Mac Rumor Show, where you've probably said that you don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon. Or maybe I've said that. Um because we just didn't see Apple like giving us that much flexibility. But now it seems like we might have a little more flexibility with the home screen. You still need to conform it to a grid, but like blank spaces in the home screen, like not having apps in that area and it just being okay to have a blank space might actually be something that happens. Do you think custom icons could be a thing or no? Is that getting too crazy? I think custom icons is too crazy. Uh, I think that, <sighs> that that does quite directly go against what Apple is trying to do. I can see minor customization, like maybe Apple lets you pick between the Messages app being green or being blue. But I don't think they're no. going to let you upload an icon pack. They should. We can already. So I don't know. It's just not I, I don't know how I feel they about should. that fully go into it because then it's like i can see tim being on stage being like this is how people have decided to take uh that's not a tim cook voice by the way that just happened to be what i went with um 
I'm not trying to do an impersonation, but I can see him being like, this is how Apple users and iPhone users have customized their home screens and like making it your own. And like now you can do that even more by adding custom icon packs and being able to freely move things around. Like I can see that being pitched as like our community of people who use this phone have tried so hard to make it their own and make it unique and, you know, have a theme set to it. And now we'll make that easier than ever by introducing our new home and lock screen customization tools. If that ever happens, which I don't think it will, I think we'll mm -hmm. get custom watch faces first. And I think the fact that we haven't had custom watch faces and how much control Apple likes to keep over um, software design really tells us that that, it, that isn't going to happen anytime soon. But the, the, the grid, I, I do understand. Um, and I did see comments from quite a lot of people saying, but this is just pointless. What, 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 why? Why do I care about this? My answer to that is if you use something like the smaller square widget, then the apps are always going to flow next to that widget, which you may not always want to be the case. And likewise, you know, devices are pretty big now. We're expecting the iPhone 16 Pro Max to be the biggest iPhone to date. Uh, what is it? 6.9 inches? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 6.9 and uh, 6.3. So these displays are getting very big now. For me personally, I like to keep apps that I use most often toward the bottom of the screen. And I yeah. would actually prefer to not have any apps at all toward the top because when I'm using the phone with one hand, it's way more useful to have the apps at the bottom where they're easily within reach. So although maybe that didn't make, a, make sense on an iPhone 4, it absolutely makes sense now that on devices of this size and when they are getting bigger to actually be able to place the icons toward the bottom of the screen. It's less about being able to have random empty space and more about, you know, you flexibility. Can, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Flexibility. I really want uh, widgets to be able to like, I don't mind if it conforms to a grid still, but I don't understand why it has to conform to the three sizes that they give us. Like if I want a clock or weather icon to be like half of, let's say the large like rectangular version of a of a widget, why can't I do that? Why can't I cut that in half but not still make it like? Do you know? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I, we kind of have that with the small little square thing, but like mm. it's got to all still be in that box. Yeah. And I don't necessarily like that. Like with Android, I don't have a phone near me. My other Android phones over there. Like I can kind of do that easily and like there are some widget apps out there but it's just not the same like i want that same custom home screen experience to come over when it comes to like having widgets being freely like made to move around a little bit more on the screen than it is now where it's kind of conformed to these specific sizes and it has to have almost all of the apps have to have some kind of weird box drop shadow something to it where it's like Sometimes transparent is cool and just like a little bit of text is fine. We don't need all of these, you know. I would like to see transparency. Um, I think that would be a, yeah. a big improvement because sometimes the widgets are a little bit too distracting for my liking. I would like yeah. on my home screen, say, to just have the time large yeah. and maybe my calendar, but I don't need those to have uh, big boxes bright, distracting them. backdrops. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's pretty, pretty much where I'm getting at with that. It's like, let me have a little bit more freedom of like, you know, if you want to conform it to a specific size, that's fine. I don't, it doesn't need to be like free flowing, but like, like how Android does it is like, I can change the like width of it. Like if I wanted to make something longer, like top to bottom, like height wise, I can do that. I can take the thing and like drag the box and crop it and I can change that around. It still kind of snaps to a grid, but it's a little more free freeing. And then ultimately if I wanted like the weather icon to not be like, on a backdrop, I can do that and ha have a background and have that like be in the top corner kind of transparently floating on something. It just looks nicer. It just looks better. And you could do that with some widgets. You can, but it's not good. Yeah. There's not a lot of good options out there. And I feel like developers would port over their Android apps if they knew that this was an option to be able to like have it look nice. Um, so that's intriguing. That is a major announcement rumor that we've had over the last week obviously the ai stuff we don't have like a lot of concrete things but we do have some ideas of what could be happening do you want to start with the google gemini stuff because i don't really understand entirely what's happening with that are they gonna like 
poured over are they going to bring over basically the gemini functionality to siri so like when we ask siri questions um would it bring that style of like chat gpt chatbot thing or is that not happening or what's going on with that I don't know how far you could describe it as a chatbot, but effectively it looks like Apple is trying to ascertain a partner to use their large language model. So it may be Apple's own right. one isn't ready yet. So mm -hmm. they're trying to just license one from another company. Like apparently they did have discussions with OpenAI, um, but there's maybe a bit of a capacity issue there. So it looks like Google Gemini will be the one and then um, Baidu in China. Um, so it, it's something that Apple wants to just plug in to power their AI features. It's like using Google search for Safari. Exactly. Like, so right? so yeah. it will be like on the back end of Siri, um, certain inquiries will go through Gemini. But obviously Apple will have tweaked the, the model and the specific instruction set that the artificial intelligence will receive um, to ensure that you are not perhaps directly speaking to, to Google Gemini. You are... You're, you're speaking effectively to Siri. It's just it's just underpinning it. It's just based on Gemini. I can imagine Apple name dropping it and saying, um, and we've worked with Google to support these new features. Um, but ultimately, Apple's not going to seed, seed something as important as this to make you really strongly feel like what you're interacting with is a Google product. Yeah. I don't see the problem with that, though. I... I they're better at it, so just let them do it. They've already got it going, so just let them do it. Like, you can make it visually look like Siri and visually be an Apple thing, but let Google do all of the heavy lifting with the with with what the AI is giving you, whatever your request might be. They should have done that with the HomeKit stuff, to be quite honest with you. Like, having Siri as a smart home automation uh, or just just in general with requests we've talked we still have people tweeting about how terrible it is at answering like why is it just not the same visual concept as siri or whatever you want it to be you can keep the name but it's using the processing of what google does with google home it's able to understand multiple commands and do things properly and not be like you know turn on the light and it's calling your dad like why is it doing that <laughs> you know i don't think it's that bad anymore but it's still pretty it's bad in that some bad. cases it's still pretty bad. So, uh, you know, Apple's great at a lot of things. And some things it's just not, it's too far behind because it was either way too late to the party and there are other better options out there. And so I don't see it as a downfall of like, you know, just, like I said before, Apple's not creating its own search engine because Google has that lockdown and it's people use that it's a verb google it is a you know people use that in everyday conversation it's like tissues and kleenex you know one's a brand but other people just see it as like oh that is the actual item is a kleenex no that's a brand you're using a tissue you know so like when it comes to searching for things on the web i see that as it's okay it's not a defeat like you use safari as your web browser and google is the basis around what you would search for and it should be the same way for the AI stuff, in my opinion. And it looks like that's where we're kind of headed, just a little bit. I don't know what ultimately it's going to mean for the rest of the features, but I don't know. It's all a question of what Apple creates for Gemini to plug into. So we're expecting yeah. integrations, obviously, for Siri. Um, it should certainly be for Spotlight. But my guess is that maybe we'll be a little bit underwhelmed by what... Uh, what these AI features are, where they are most flexible. And possibly where Apple is going to lean into them is with specific features across apps. So we've heard rumors about uh, there being uh, AI features for notes and pages and keynotes and Apple Music um, and plenty of these other apps. I mean, some, some apps like the Health app would be really interesting with some AI features. So it's not to, to downplay them. I particularly, I think health and Apple Music have a lot of potential to get some really interesting integrations. But there's even stuff like the Photos app would hugely benefit from more AI features. Um, others, not so much, like what? the Messages app. I don't think that's going to, to change the world. But I can imagine... Yeah, like auto-completed sentences, like yeah. being better at that. I guess that's helpful, but like... It's, it's uh, that's just not, not really like a sexy announcement. Yeah, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not enormously exciting. So I think that possibly a lot of WWDC's runtime will be, at least the main keynote event, will be taken up by going through these in-app features rather than 
Siri is completely better. This is Siri 2.0. Um, now you can ask Siri to do anything because I think the thing that also made me think that that is now what we're getting is we are not expecting a chatbot at all. So we're not expecting like a text interface that is chat GPT style that is Apple GPT or Siri GPT or whatever. That is not going to be the case. So how much is Siri really going to be able to do? I, th I think probably the extent of it will just be better understanding for those home requests where you field multiple instructions or with a message if you want to tack something onto that. So if it's, you know, send a message to this person, but also turn on the light, it, it will now be able to understand that. But I don't think anyone's going to come away from this and think, oh, yeah, Siri is now is now the, the next generation AI platform. I think that that probably will come eventually because Apple certainly is um, putting a lot into AI now, more than ever. Um, but I think this year possibly it's going to be a lot of little tidbits across apps rather than Siri as the focus. So like, I think it's kind of a missed opportunity to not have a chatbot, but like I also understand why they might not want to and if they don't do it, that's fine. But then the, a lot of the features that I, I use... AI for is mostly like, okay, I'm writing something, fix this grammar and give me a little bit more of like a personal sentiment behind it or something laid back, R come up with some ideas for, you know, a YouTube script or whatever, you know, just random stuff for like work related things. So if they are going to put that into like notes, I would want it like kind of across like the entire platform so that maybe it doesn't have to be built in by developers like Notion. Notion AI has like stuff in there where I can select text and then there's like a bunch of stuff I can do that. Give me that across the entire operating system is what I would want. Things like that. Also with Apple Music, is this, you know, it's a lot of like playlist stuff. That's not a sexy announcement either because Spotify has just been so good at it for yeah, so long. But I still but think I it understand would get a bit of a cheer. You know, if you're like me, you're yeah. an Apple Music user. I'm not going to go yeah. back to Spotify um, I'd be really happy if suggestions got way better. And even just, mm -hmm. I find I have a lot of issues with requesting songs with Siri um, and playing the right version of things. So I, I quite often have it where I will request a specific song, but it will play me the album. And I don't want the album, I want the song. And I even find I have that sometimes when the album, I'm not, it's not like a, that's the, the titular song. It is, it's, just, it's just playing me the whole album for no reason and starting with track one. Um, there is capacity for those sorts of inquiries to get way better and also where songs have multiple versions. So if you like a particular remix or a version by a particular orchestra or, or something, those sorts of AI features, they're not going to make people hugely excited, but it, it would be useful, um, especially if you are yeah. a bit of an Apple Music Power user. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind all that. I. How many times have I said I want to switch to Apple Music on this? How many times? I think the only time it would actually genuinely happen is if uh, I got a car with CarPlay, and then it makes more sense to have Apple Music. Even though Spotify is kind of getting some of the features, it's still not great because um, Apple just limits a lot of Siri stuff. That's what I want. I want more Siri being okay with some of the other apps still. I know there's a big beef behind that, so I it just the uh, integrations are there, um, and when third-party developers really take advantage of it, Siri can work surprisingly well with third-party apps. But mm -hmm. it's just developers are, seem to be a little bit disenchanted with what Siri can do, so they think, "What's the point in building this in the first place?" Or in the case of Spotify, Spotify hates Apple, so <laughs> right. they don't want to make that's it better a different, for users. That's a different thing. Where it's not it's not fair. Like your beef is causing us to be uh, unhappy in some instances. And, and honestly, the thing that keeps me around Spotify, I've said it before, is just it's so good at music discovery that it's it's so hard for me to want to lose that. Because, like, there are months where I'll go on and I'm just like, music is slow. My favorite bands aren't releasing stuff. So I need something new. And I get all sorts of new stuff delivered to my, like, home feed from Spotify that has brought on like legit follow like i want to be a big fan of this band now i like i love it like this is great where have i how have i missed this all these years and i just don't see that happening on apple music which is sad because i grew up listening to my music on itunes and so i want to go back to that just from a nostalgia point of view i still love the ui more than i do on spotify and the way things are handled from a library perspective but like I just can't leave right now. I'm still stuck.
We'll get uh, you there. Anyways, we'll get you there. Yeah. Slowly. Maybe iOS 18 will help. Who knows? Okay. Um, in terms of like other AI f- stuff, do you do you think there's anything else there, or can we speculate a little more on like improvements? One of the interesting ones is shortcuts. Um, there's been a few rumors about this that shortcuts would integrate more closely with the beefed up version of Siri. Um, I like that. Which would enable you to create more sort of multi-step tasks automatically. Um, so you may, maybe it will be that you can say to Siri that you want to create an automation that does a thing gonna... and then shortcuts builds it for you automatically and then says, well, now you can see it in shortcuts, but also you can just request it. Um, that would be a really useful I think feature. Yeah, because how many times have you like saw a shortcut that like even the one, okay, so for those of you listening, um, I, I I feel like, uh, it, let me re- rephrase this here because I'm just a mental fart. <laughs> for those of you uh, who haven't seen the latest like TikTok that we did a couple days ago or Instagram reel, it was a short form video where we I showed off a, uh, uh, a thing that I didn't even know you could do. So basically, if you've ever been in an app where you uh, want to turn your phone horizontal, but you're like me and you have your your lock screen lock set all the time because you don't want it to change, but in some instances you do, like you're in the Photos app and there's no good like full screen, I want to turn my phone, or, you know, so you have to turn it horizontally in order for the aspect to change. Uh, you have to go into Control Center and turn it, like that's kind of annoying, but that's just how we've done it. There's a shortcut that we built that allows you to, whenever you're in a specific app, it'll turn off your auto rotation lock or your screen orientation lock, and you can do that. And then when you leave the app, it automatically in the background turns it back on. So then when you are laying in bed and you're on an app that you don't want it to accidentally change the aspect of it, like it won't do that. And that's brilliant. And I didn't know you could do that. And there are so many things that are probably out there that you're like, oh man, I didn't know that I needed this or that I could do this. And like, I feel like if you could just say it out loud, like, hey, Siri, every time I uh, turn my phone into the, or every time I go into the photos app, I want the aspect ratio, or not the aspect ratio, but the screen orientation lock to turn off, make me something that does that. You don't have to go in and try to figure out the ifs, this, then this, you know, stuff behind it. It just does it automatically. That would be super useful. So I really hope that that, what you said happens because... Yeah, I think a lot of people would like that. Yeah, that's a that's a good one um, in my mind. I think it's probably one of the more useful ones. I'm just more skeptical about AI and things like the Messages app. Um, and uh, I don't know how useful it will be in pages other than just for content creation. But even then, how good is that going to be? How, how effective is that compared to just asking uh, ChatGPT and is ChatGPT able to complete that task more effectively because you can provide more context. So we'll see. Um, I think that some of these features are going to be way more interesting than others. Is it um, <laughs> is it just my work and the work that I do or is it an age thing? But like, do people really use pages for like professional work <laughs> still? I feel like that's there's an age thing for that. Like it's either you're in college and you're writing like you're making documents for work or for for school or you're like above a certain age where like Microsoft Word was like the thing that everybody used a lot or you're in like a corporate environment and like cuz I just never think to use pages for anything uh writing or creating ever. I don't know. I think you've probably just made people very angry again, Dan. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and there's going to be a, a hundred comments saying, "I use I use Pages every day. How dare you?" Oh, um, and that's not. And that, I'm not knocking Pages. Pages is great. It's a my. It's a fantastic Microsoft alternative. That's what it was made for, right? Because there was like a whole yeah. situation with yeah. And then Apple just made its own suite of iWork apps. Remember iWork? So like, I. It's nothing wrong with it. I just don't understand like. Who uses pages? <laughs> yeah, I, I used to. I used to use it. Or for what? But not like. Anymore. Do you write your article? Would you write your articles in pages? Never. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Like, I would use pages if I was writing a formal letter that I needed to send as a PDF, or I actually needed to physically print it, and it needed to be formal. But I also didn't okay. want to like download a, an application to do that because it was just a. Uh, 
you okay there? You, you, you thumbs downing my, my, uh, my opinion. Did I thumbs down something? What did I do? I got, I got a little thumbs down flashing up. I didn't. Where <laughs> is the wait? Are the emoji reactions working in this? What is happening? Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I, uh, I didn't do that on purpose, but that's incredible. So for those of you who are watching, there's a little fun thing for you. I'm not thumbs down, but now I will. What is what happens when I thumbs down? Nothing. Is it two thumbs? I don't know. Anyways, no. I'm sorry. Keep going. I was just trying to look at other things for a second while you were well, going on. Yeah. Um, so I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't really use pages very much, but I would use it. I don't know once a year for something like that. Like if I needed to physically print a, like a sign or something like for my front door to say that I'm out or something. I don't know. That situation, I would just go in pages and just do it really quickly. But it is if I'm writing longer form content, I'm going to use something like Ulysses or... Keep going. I'm still yeah. trying to see if this works. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, you're using other... And I think that's just me. I, I'm sorry. For those of you who might have been offended, I'm, I might have been naive because I'm in my own bubble of how I work. And I'm either using Apple Notes app to write up a script or like, before I used to use Google Docs. I just thought Google Docs was easier because I didn't have to like load up my desktop with a bunch of shit documents everywhere that like I'll never look at again. So uh, I don't know. I just, I am in my own bubble. I just was curious who, who uses pages on a regular basis for things. Let me know. You know, we've, we've talked many times about letting me know your workflow. So like, would you actually be, what, what kind of, here's a, here's a question. What, AI feature for pages and keynote do you need? Let us know. What would be helpful for you? What automated tasks would you need? Because I don't use those, so I have no idea. Um, can we talk about freeform scenes for like two seconds? Yes, I think <laughs> th th all there is to say will take two seconds, <laughs> which is... Yeah. What the hell is a freeform scene and why are we getting this? So at the moment with freeform, it's like an infinite canvas. So if you put yeah. some drawings or some shapes or some information on one edge of the mm -hmm. campus and then you nav uh, campus uh, on one edge on one Cam edge of the canvas. canvas and then you navigate yep. to the the other side and you put something there, um, you will have to with your finger actually or your trackpad kind of scroll back and navigate to that original location uh, manually. Whereas cool, with cool. scenes, you can kind of take a snapshot of that location and you can go back to it automatically. So I'm sure that's going to be the real highlight of WWDC this year. Yeah. I uh, I could see that being just a real big crowd pleaser. I did make the joke in my, uh, I wonder if anybody, you know, was at the very end of my video, but I was like, and for the two people that use Freeform, you're going to be getting seen. <laughs> so um, it's no disrespect. It's just a joke. I, I was all about Freeform when we were first like looking at it and stuff. And then I realized, oh, hey, it's another app I'm never going to use. Um, but I, again, I love hearing all of your guys' emails about your workflows. If you are an avid Freeform user and you just think it's the hottest app that you've ever used in the last two years, please, please, please let me know what you use it for and how you find it useful. I think to me, it would only be useful in a team environment like if we were all using it together i don't have a need to do this myself like just myself so and apple really likes it they push it they, it was part of my apple vision pro like uh demo it was like a thing in the demo of like hey you can be in free form and work together with this and i'm like why would i ever do that i have i have no need to want to do that but you know i am not the world doesn't revolve around me so we have to, i would love to hear from all of you and what the free forms app is useful for um okay the biggest things that i am excited for for ios 18 because i'm hoping that it happens but i just don't think it's going to do or you think we're going to get like a major visual redesign or not i wouldn't go as far as to say major but i do okay. think there will be a slight redesign and i think that the go sports on. app that we spoke about a few weeks ago with brian tong gives us the best indication of that because it does seem to be using a slightly more uh slightly more modern slightly more translucent design language um and that also is something we've seen in the new version of the tv app so there is a, a change um if you look at the tv app and you feel like 
yes, this is a radical major change, then maybe you will think that iOS 18 is a major change uh, design-wise. But I don't think it's a major change. I just think it's a nice little iteration. Um, I really like how Vision OS looks. Um, That's what I was with this say. translucency, everything has this sort of glassy, translucent yeah. aesthetic. Um, it's really nice. It looks like that possibly is the direction that we're moving in because that's a little bit, well, that's to fine. my eye, what the sports app looks like. Um, so I would be pretty pleased Except for with the that. navigation. Except for the navigation. That is horrendous. Why can't I swipe back? Why is everything at yes. the top? But just visually. Fix just the visuals. Visually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Is this picture here? So when I'm looking at our article about uh, the Vision OS inspired design changes rumor. Is that all? Those are all Vision OS. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah. Yeah, those are all. That looks amazing. The Apple like, Music app looks incredible for Vision OS. Yeah. I don't know that I want that much translucency. Like, there needs to be a little more opacity to it or less, uh, whatever, you know, give us more uh, background. But, like, I like the look, even, like, the design of the boxes and the, the shapes and everything, a little more rounded edges. I like that. Let's do that. Let's absolutely do that. I even like the icons, the circle, the circle icons. I'm a big circle icon fan. Do you I like circle too, icons? I, I am too, actually. Yeah. I think Apple is too I wedded we to, bring the, that uh, back. to the square app icons, but I would, well, then I would be. Why the hell do they do this. it on Vision OS? Because it's to separate the platform. It's stupid. <laughs> Make it consistent. I want the same experience on everything. I'm just kidding. It's not stupid, but I, I do think that they should bring those icons yeah. over because it looks great. It looks good. Uh, or, you know, do it for, well, because like, yeah, you say it's to separate the platform, but like iPad and Mac icons are the same. So why do they just choose that one thing to make it different? Well, the Mac has its own kind of design language now where, although we now have square icons, which was a new change yeah. as of what, I think it was Big Sur that, that moved in that yeah, direction. Yeah, go back to circles. But uh, the Mac icons are different because they have a lot more of a 3D aesthetic. There's a lot more layering. Um, so Apple does want to make the Mac the icons name. look different to the iPhone. Um, and obviously the iPhone looks the same as the iPad, but then the Apple Watch has circular Ooh. icons, but the circular icons in Vision OS have this 3D nature to them and then if you really yeah. want to, you can even add tv os icons in there nope. which now have we're getting too crazy a, a sort of parallax <laughs> effect so i would like to see them all kind of brought into line with each other because i like the the parallax effect that you get on apple tv and envision os um but i do kind of understand maybe circular icons on on the apple tv would look a bit strange no that would be horrible <laughs> don't do that one i uh I, I don't i don't know that that would be any good i kind of like the what does other platforms do? I guess they all kind of do the same thing, right? They're all just like rectangular boxes of the Pretty apps. Much. Maybe. I, I, you know, like like a smart TV, like a, I think an LG maybe or Samsung. The apps for that are circular. It doesn't look bad, but they're also not massive. They're very tiny and they're like in a scrollable like dock. So that's probably what it is. I think if it was like as massive as each app is on Apple TV and it was circle, that would look so bad. <laughs> so I, I understand that one. No, oh, well, I still want it to be a good visual redesign, personally. But yeah, that's the one thing everyone says happen. every year in the tech community. I know, I am that guy, um, and I'm 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 with there. I'm there with you. Last year, I think I said to you, I don't know what I really want them to change, but because I'm such a big fan of the Vision OS aesthetic, I'd be really pleased mm -hmm. if we moved in that direction. As long as it doesn't make things too illegible, uh, I think we're okay. Yeah. Um. Excuse me. RCS support, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, we're just assuming it's happening at WWDC. We don't really know that for sure. We do know 2024. Apple did say that for the most part. Um, well, they didn't say the year. They just said coming next year, correct? Yes, that is so correct. It just makes sense for it to be in line with this. It's a software thing. But do you think they'll make a big deal out of it? Or do you just think they'll they'll say like <laughs> in passing when talking about the messages app? I don't think it will be a big thing. I think they want to tell us about the benefits of uh, iMessage, not about RCS. Yeah. So they'll be like, here's all the great features coming to iMessage, but if you have to use the other phones, 
here's how we'll make your experience better because we have to, otherwise people will get angry from the government. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. Did we talk about the the whole being sued thing? I don't remember where that happened in time, but did we do that last week? Uh, no, we didn't. Hmm. We could talk about that, but maybe not. I don't know. The WWDC is going to be a lot of iOS 18, a lot of AI. Um, maybe briefly, let's just touch on the other platforms for WWDC. I'm guessing we're going to get a lot of the same features trickled down, right? The AI stuff's yes. going to trickle down. Um, but I still want like good platform specific features. Yes. So let's start. iPad OS, a little harder. What is the one platform specific thing that you want to see? Whether it's just a change to make it you know a little bit better functional, or like a visual thing. What, what do you what are you hoping uh, for? Putting I you on the spot. I would say two things. It would be improvements to Stage Manager and to the Files app. Okay. I think that's just what do you essential. Want to see, what do you want to see done with the Files app? You uh, want it to be more like Finder? Effectively, yes. Yeah. And what everybody hated Finder, remember that? People still crap all over Finder, but then they go to the Files app and Apple's yep. like, see, it could be worse. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think they made Files, the Files apps on purpose so that people would stop complaining about the Finder app, saying like, ah, see, we can make it worse. And it's, you know, this is what it looks like. I still don't understand what save on my iPhone or on my iPad means. I don't know what, like, I, I get yeah. it, but like I don't know where they're going. It, it, where do they go? It needs to be a little bit, uh, a little bit clearer. Yeah. And it's just also just not the fastest thing to navigate compared to Finder. I feel like I can use Finder really quickly and effectively to get to what I need, but the Files app always feels slow and painful. And within a couple of minutes, I'm going back to my Mac. I feel like they should change. Um, this kind of goes for I, iPhone more than iPad, but like the Today widget view when you like swipe to the yeah. left either f either get rid of that or make it more useful please um i think that'd be a great place for like a desktop sort of for like your files all of like uh, even if it's just like a a little widget based thing like section of it and then you can click to expand into that but like here is your desktop per se, like I download something from the internet, <laughs> from a website, and I wanna know where that goes, I should be able to quickly swipe over and be like, here are your recent downloads, here are the files that you've saved on your iPhone, categorized by file type, boom, go grab it. Like, I That's a know. good suggestion. Yeah. Um, ooh, uh, we've given Shay at Concept Central a lot of love on the uh, uh, iOS 18 video that I did and for WWDC, I believe. Um, and so I do want to bring him up one more time because his, uh, you've seen that concept video he's done for iOS 18, right? He did message me once saying that the photos thing was inspired by our conversation or like, but then he tried to find it and he, I, I feel like I did say this. <laughs> it was what my suggestion of like uh, stacking photos together of like takes so that you don't see a million different yes versions of the same take that was something we said right i, I believe think so. so he attributed to me and you know what i'm gonna take that i anyways i'm gonna take the credit for that but he he put that in his uh concept video and I'm, I'm like i want this like all the things in his concept video was amazing being able to have widgets from uh control center toggles brilliant why are we not doing that do you think that'll ever happen that's i would never say never for that one um but that's, I feel like that's super useful. I feel like, like it a quick would be more likely that they will focus on redesigning Control Center first. Okay. Which we've well, actually had no thing. rumors about this year. It's worth saying. Last year, that, that was, was rumored heavily. That was a major was thing for last, for last year? year. But this year, uh, not happen. even a whisper. Maybe it will happen. Um, okay. I don't really have anything for the iPad. I think mine would be... Um, like a better, yeah, I don't know. They brought the, the dock thing with the all the apps. What is that? Shelf? What is it? Is that what it's called? App library. App library. <laughs> Shelf. <laughs> I, for, I forgot. Shelf is, uh, I think that's OnePlus. Anyways, I've been testing that phone a lot, okay? So just give me a break. Um, 
yeah the, sh- the the app library like that was nice but like i still feel like there's there needs to be like a better application system just to, use like, of find space as stuff. well i think with the ipad y- yeah yeah and i think this goes for the iphone but it's specifically important for the ipad the the whole like blank space thing like being able to put like ha- condense the apps if i want to a little more have some blank spaces uh and free form the the widgets a little bit more to my cust you know to the way i like it that is that would be my my main thing and i think that might happen although apple is usually like a one-year stagger of like this feature came to the iphones home screen and lock screen next year you'll get that on the ipad just just do it now just do it now that's fine um what about the mac what would you want to see for the mac the mac there's nothing system specific but i think there is a long way to go with certain apps so it will come as no surprise when i say that the apple music app is uh, a mess um a lot of it doesn't even work properly um things like crossfade simply do not work at all um lately i've had even more issues when i'm uploading my own music to icloud or making edits to my library um and i really would like a a pro Apple Music experience on the Mac, which I know that's sort of what they are trying to offer, but I feel like it doesn't work at all. And I feel like it's actually barely functional. I quite often want to, I tend to, when I add albums to my library or I'm interested in new music, I add whole albums to my library. And then one by one, I delete the tracks. That is a miserable oh. experience on the Mac. Oh, oh um, wait, go on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? It's because I like to I like to not miss anything. So I like to have it in my library uh, no, no. and then decide later if I like it or not. No. What? See, this is where the, the, the music person, the music snobbery comes in for me. I am very old school. Like, I, I have definitely switched to the new trend of, like, everything is a playlist and a single. Because I've had no choice but to adapt that way. Because now bands put out, like, music one week at a time basically and they don't do full albums as much or if they do it's like here's 15 weeks of singles and then oh our album came out and it's just those songs that they put together onto one thing i hate that i used to love the like it was two songs albums coming out the other 12 are going to be there and that's a surprise like that is like oh it's this album day and i can be excited to want to listen through it you know, and I feel like that just doesn't happen as much anymore. But what you're saying is you find a band or an artist and you listen to one song and you like it and you add the album in which that song is in and then you delete songs from the album, whether you like it or not. Yeah, because that way I know that uh. I've, I know that any, oh, I can't do that. any album in my library, <laughs> I know that I have listened and sort of assessed every song in that entire album. And quite often, if it's an artist I know that I quite like, I will just go through and blanket at every single thing that they've got to my library. And then when I'm just mm. shuffling through my library, I will just delete anything I don't like. And it's just a way, I mean, it means I don't miss stuff, but it works so terribly on the Mac because you have to sort of click into a menu, click delete, and then it doesn't know what to queue up next. Whereas the behavior is completely different on the iPhone oh. and on the iPad because then it queues something up for you immediately. Yeah. I can't do that. I, I, I also think I, I, I am, you know, is it, I'm a boomer, I guess. And this, this is where I become, this is where I You're become out of boomer. touch. With, no, but this is where I become out of touch with today's <laughs> society because I, I really do treat digital music as a physical product still. And like an album in my library is like an album that I hold in my hands and I can't physically delete a song I don't like. I have to deal with it. I'm stuck with it. It is the artists in, you know, like it's their baby. They created it. They put that song on there for a reason. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I can remove it from its existence. So when I look at an album in my library, I look at it as this is the whole work from start to finish of what they wanted, their vision. And so I don't think I should be able to remove those songs. But I do agree, like albums have skips. Like some songs are just not that good. And so if you want to just hit play <clears throat> from your library and you want it to shuffle through your albums, and but you don't want it to play the songs you don't like, I understand that. That's where I think liked songs should play into, uh, into the factor. Mm-hmm. Like you should be able to add the album to your library, but then go through and like the ones that you like and then just hit like from there, which you can do. You just don't treat it that way. So it's just weird to me. 
Yeah, I, I just, I deleting songs from your library from the album. That's just weird. I get so pissed when I look at my my. I don't, I don't do it often, but the Apple Music library. If I only see one song from that album, and I'm like, what is this? I need the whole album. Put it on here. But why? Why? Why do you want to when you shuffle hear a lot of songs that you don't like? <clears throat> because then if you're, I don't. You're gonna just skip loads. because I'm. Because I'm still holding out to hope that I'm not turning into the person that shuffles music and doesn't <laughs> listen to full albums from start to finish. Right. So I want the option readily but, but available. But some albums you do want to listen to like that, but others you just don't like. I have plenty of albums where I only like one or two songs on the album. I think I'm just having an existential crisis that I, I am slowly losing my childhood when it comes to music, that albums are no longer important. Right. Right. And I, I know that there are still some that are, but like even I, who was like excited for an album and I listened to it, I'm like, oh, but I'm just going to listen to the songs that I, I only like from there. And I take those songs and put them into a playlist. And then I only listen to that playlist, which makes me very sad. I do listen to everything once though, all the way through. But I used to be like a person who'd do the whole thing multiple times. And now I just can't do that. My, my attention span is gone. How many songs do you have in your library? Oh, f who knows? Hold on. Well, it's just it's just an interesting bit of context because if you're if you ever do do you always only ever select an album because I've got about ten thousand songs in my library and those are as I say pretty much all things that I have selected song by song. So that's a insane amount of songs that you personally curate. Yeah, well that's that's How why this time? system works for me. <laughs> well, I listen to that's music so all day while time. I'm working all day. So all day, yeah, it, it it's easy for me to listen to several hundred songs a day. Yeah, so that that doesn't happen because I have to like when I can't listen to music while I edit because I have to listen to yeah. my own stupid voice the whole time. So I can't I can't do that. The only times I can really listen to music and do my job is when I'm like either researching something or writing the script but even then if i'm writing the script like i can't listen to podcasts when i'm writing a script because i'm thinking of the words in my head <laughs> and i'm trying to listen to the words that are being said and i'm often like typing what i'm listening yeah, to because i'm that's zoning the worst out one. <laughs> yeah yeah so i can't do that i don't know how you can it's hard for me to listen to music is a little bit better because i'm not a lyrics person so i don't focus on lyrics a lot i mostly listen to the music portion of it and can still write words out and be okay um, but yeah, I mean, that's the only time in my job. So the only time I really listen to music is when I'm, uh, like outside doing yard work, uh, driving in the car is a big one for me. And I don't know, I can't really listen to it at home unless I like put the kids to bed and I'm like, oh, I want to listen to this song real quick because a favorite band of mine dropped a, a, a song that I need to listen to, but that's rare. So it's mostly commutes for me. That's my music listening time. Uh, or cutting the grass. Do you have to cut the grass? You don't have to cut the grass in your area. Do you have a lot of grass? <laughs> well, there, there, there is a lot of grass in the area, but because I live in an apartment, I don't have to worry about that. You don't have to cut. Yeah, okay. So that's a big thing for me. We've got a lot of useless land around here. So uh, anyways, back to your question. Um, well, so here's the thing. Spotify is so piss poor when it comes to album management that I can't really give you a true representation of how many songs I have in my library because I, it doesn't tell me that. Right. And it doesn't like, if I liked, if I liked an album and album, added an album to my library, it doesn't add those songs to your song list. You have to like those, which is stupid. Right. So there is no clear answer with Spotify then. But right now, if you looked at my like songs, and a lot of this is um, I used a tool to import my Apple Music library, my iTunes library. Um, I have 11,143 songs. No, 443 songs. But again, big portion of that is stuff that I added all at once, migrated from my, my iTunes library. So I don't know what the actual answer is. It could be a lot more. Yeah. Honestly, it should be a lot more um, because I do add whole albums. When I find a band I like, 
I want to add their entire. That's that's the other thing. When I find a band I like, even if I don't like their albums, I want to add their entire discography to my library. I want to be able to go in there and see like, here's everything from that band. Maybe I want to spend the day listening to that band. I don't know. Apple Music would be better for that experience. I think it would be, which is why I need to switch. But I can't find the same. Like if I go to browse right now, I'm getting recommendations from their playlist team. Don't care about any of that. Now in spatial audio, it's not music. See, that now in spatial audio should be spatial audio music that I listen to. Take my library. But this analyze is better now if you know where to look. So you've got four or five customized playlists that are customized to your taste. So you've got the chill mix, the get up mix. You've got uh, <laughs> the, there's one other one. Um, where are those at? Are those in listen now? Made well, for you? It depends on if you've added them. But so for mine, I've got the, the friends mix, which I actually quite enjoy. So that um, takes music for people that I follow and picks highlights and puts it together. Heavy, oh, rot cool. heavy rotation, um, which is things that you are listening to a lot at the moment, which I also actually I use. That. And that, that updates every day. You've got your favorites mix, which is an ongoing mix of things that you, it, it thinks that you really enjoy. Um, and then you've got your get up mix, your chill mix and your new music mix, which would be where you get those new music suggestions. But there is even more than that because you can add your replay, which I, use a lot because I like to sort of see my top chart of the year and every week it refreshes and I like to see what songs are moving up in my personal favorites of the year and what's moving down and then you can go even further and you can go into radio stations and radio stations some of them are also customized um so yeah. you there there Apple Music is better than it was at this I feel like it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a terrible experience for you for discovery it's just not as good as Spotify but then I think it would make up for it with library management yeah. I mean, listen, I'm a subscriber to both, like an idiot, but I am. Um, I just like, so, you know, there's a whole section of playlists that are made for me. There are five daily mix, six daily mixes, and it's all different genres. And then they just made a mix based off of all the genre, you know, the different genres that I have, bands that are very similar to one another. Um, then there's my Discover Weekly, which gets, you know, just... It's sort of the music that I listen to. It definitely has gotten worse, I feel like, over the last couple of years, um, where it's more of like, oh, hey, you listen to this genre a lot, so all of our Discover Weekly is going to be songs that are of this genre, where it's like, I think you should take a nice blend of everything that I have in my library that I've liked. Um, but I guess I'm also, that's probably just me. I do listen to a lot of the same stuff. Uh, and then there's the release radar, which I don't love, but I do like at the same time. But it only gives me like 30 songs that are new from bands that I like or are similar or that I follow. I wonder if Apple Music's better at that. Like, does I get notifications sometimes of like, hey, this band just dropped a new song on Apple Music. Does that happen regularly and at the time they, the moment they upload it? Or is that like spread out and only occasional? In my experience, it's pretty consistent and it is on the day. What qu constitutes uh, you getting a notification? Like, what's the qualifications? Do you have to be following them? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Because I, I feel like I've only ever gotten, like, a few bands. And it also pins it at the top of your library um, in a little bubble. So if you miss the uh, notification, it will always be there. And those can stack up as well. So if you've had multiple releases, it makes sure you don't miss anything. See, that's what I, I, I need from, uh, I need Spotify to be better about that. They're, I'd get no notifications for anything um, except for our podcast when that goes out. Um, I really don't get a lot of music notifications. I think there is like a notification center that I can go in the app and click on. But I don't do that. Send me a push notification of like the bands that I really like. When they drop something new, I want to know the moment that's uploaded. Uh, because a lot of times it's like New Music Friday, but those bands drop that single like a few days beforehand, and then I won't get to it until Friday, and I don't want that. Give it to me the moment it comes out. Like treat it like YouTube. Let me pick the certain p bands that I want, you know, notifications for everything they do. Um, okay. Well, 
we've hit the end. We this is a good Apple Music portion that I didn't plan on, but uh, yeah, let us know uh, anything that you want. Let us know anything, <laughs> anything that we talked about. You've got you've got opinions on. Let us know in the comments, Twitter, X, whatever it's called, um, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, Mastodon. All right, I don't know. We're done. Okay, catch everybody in the next episode. Thank you.